So Travis, you and your daughter both have faced suspension and a really uh, sort of strange situation. I know there's a lot of details to unpack, uh, but really the the claim against you had been, quote, misgendering a student. I don't know if you want to just sort of take us through how this event unfolded from your end first. Well, the news story was broke by a, a local company, WCAX. And the story ended up being on Facebook after it was on the local news. And it had got quite a few views and then, of course, comments from both sides. And one of the comments on there was from this transgender student's mother. And it had said the gist of it was that my daughter had made up the story and it was all blown out of proportion. She was looking for attention. And that really struck a nerve with me that my daughter is not looking for attention. This is a serious issue. Uh, so I replied to her that uh, while my daughter got violated, your son got a free show. And because I called them her son, that's why I was called in to, they did an investigation and then they asked me to do a public apology for misgendering the child, which I refused to do because I didn't misgender him. Um, and so they suspended me effective immediately when I would not issue the apology. And you're a coach, you, you're a coach at the district, correct? Correct. I, I was coaching middle school girls soccer at the time. Okay. So you post this, you post this comment on Facebook. So this is not something happening on school grounds. You weren't speaking directly to the student. You were responding to the parent of this student when this happened, correct? That is correct. Now the situation you're talking about, this involves Blake. Um, your daughter and what unfolded in in the locker room. Um, so let's let's sort of go over to that part of because this is this is so many layers this story and I think it's an important story to to talk about. Um, so Blake, can you tell us a little bit about what happened that sort of led to this? Yeah, so I was in the locker room with a bunch of other teammates getting ready for our game, and the trans student walked in. We asked them to leave. They didn't. And when we went to talk to the principals. They said there's nothing they can do and that the trans student is allowed to be in there, no matter if it was a biological male. And if I felt uncomfortable, I should just change in a single stall. And when other parents were contacting the school, they just said there's nothing they could do. And later I had a conversation the next day with a friend in class, how it was crazy that they would just let the trans student come in. And I was suspended. So you were suspended because somebody overheard this conversation, another student, and reported it to the co-principal's office, correct? That's kind of how that went went on. That's mm -hmm. what happened. Um, what was your reaction, Blake? And then I want to hear from you, Travis, but to hearing that you were suspended over that. Um, I thought that was crazy for using freedom of speech that I could be suspended because I didn't want a male watching me change. Well, and that's the that's the issue at the center of this, right? Is that there there are people who are uncomfortable, and you said it wasn't just yourself. There were other parents that were also uncomfortable with this going on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so Travis, for you as as a father, now you're in a unique position because you're a coach, right, in the district, mm -hmm. and you're then watching your daughter not only be upset about a situation, an alleged situation there in in the locker room, but also. Um, then being suspended for speaking out on it to another student. What was your reaction to that? Uh, quite honestly, I was really not all that shocked. Um, I attended Blake's interview uh, during the investigation. And just from being there at the interview, it seemed pretty clear what was about to happen. Um, so I wasn't completely shocked, very disappointed, but not not shocked. So, okay, I, I want to go over to you for a minute, uh, Phil, on this, because from what I understand, and maybe you can explain this to me, because I don't quite know what a restorative justice circle is, and so forgive me there, but but apparently what happened here was Blake was, you know, not only suspended, but she was told that she needed to participate in this restorative justice circle, um, allegedly also told she needed to apologize. When you look at this legally speaking, what is your take on what allegedly unfolded here? Yeah, so our take was this was compelled speech, a suppression of speech in violation of the First Amendment. Students don't check their First Amendment rights at the schoolhouse door. And Blake had every right to express her opinion about whether a male should be in the girls locker room and to call a male a male. So uh, that conversation she had was protected. And the fact that she was punished for 
expressing her view was a violation of the First Amendment. And then to make matters worse, the school wanted Blake to participate, as you said, in this restorative circle, basically re-education uh, of Blake uh, and get her to apologize. And if they deem her to have done a good enough job, they would uh, lift the remaining suspension. Um, I don't, and maybe there are, and I just don't know. I can't think of, and I've covered a lot of cases over the years. I may, and maybe this has happened. I don't know. But if somebody were to say something negative about Christianity, let's say, or I don't think Christianity is true, right? Which, you know, you have the free speech right to say, would there ever be a scenario in which that student or faculty member would have to go into a restorative justice circle to be told how to think differently about that perspective? I know it seems like a silly question, Phil. I'm just trying to understand, you know, on all the different ideas that exist, this seems like a very uncommon thing to have this sort of purported policy on. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, certainly no one would be punished by the school for having a view of the kind you just mentioned. Uh, so this clearly was picking on Blake because she expressed a certain view that the school didn't like. And particularly, she disagreed with their policy on the locker room. So, so Blake, you were essentially accused of bullying, from what I understand. When you heard that word, or if you heard that word, how it was presented to you, what, what did that feel like in light of what you felt you had said and done to be sort of called a bully? Yeah, they said I was being charged with bullying, harassment, and hazement. And I never even said anything to the trans student besides, like, can you leave the locker room? Like, I never said anything after that to the student. So it was just, like, crazy that I could be considered a bully for that. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it, th this is a very, it's a very complicated case. What's interesting, Travis, is that, well, actually, let me ask you this before I make a comment there. So, so did the suspension happen before the Facebook interaction? Had that already happened? Uh, no, the suspension was uh, due to the Facebook interaction. So it was at the end of the season. Unfortunately, there was one game left. So there was a, one game that I did not get to coach. Okay, I'm sorry. I meant Blake's suspension. Did Blake's oh. suspension happen before that interaction? I apologize. No, her suspension was not actually served. And maybe Phil could speak to that. Yeah, so sure. they uh, they were informed. The family was informed that Blake was being investigated. Uh, for harassment and bullying before the Facebook interaction, but uh, they didn't reach any conclusions until after Travis's Facebook interaction and Travis's suspension. So Travis was suspended first, then Blake, then we got notice that Blake was being suspended as well. So, so Phil, let's talk about Travis's suspension because you know you have a situation where somebody is engaging in a comment online, not on school property. Not and even if it was, I mean, but but they're engaging in a conversation. What is your take legally on what on what happened there? Yeah, so legally, Travis was a private citizen expressing his opinion on a matter of public concern. The Supreme Court has made it clear that he has every right to do that. Uh, there would be a balancing that would be required as to whether the school's interest in suppressing his speech uh, outweighed his interest in expressing his opinion. In this context, there'd be no reason for the school to have a greater interest. Uh, and therefore, they had no justification for punishing Travis simply because they didn't like what he had to say. Yeah, and I don't want to I don't want to oversimplify this. I guess the part of this that is confusing and, and maybe one of you can help clarify some of this, too. When you have a group of people and some of them are uncomfortable and you have one person, you know, at the center of that. Why is it that the solution to the group of people feeling uncomfortable in their locker room is to go into their own, you know, individual stall or to go somewhere else. Why is that the solution to it, I guess, Phil? I'm a little, it's it's confusing to me instead of asking the one person to sort of maybe change in a stall. Yeah, it's, we, we, we agree. I mean, it doesn't make any sense for the school to inconvenience all the girls. It wasn't just Blake. Uh, all the girls who felt uncomfortable with the male undressing with them in the locker room uh, for the sake of one person who wanted to have an accommodation. Blake, how have the students treated you? How have fellow students treated you? What has it been like in school since, you know, this obviously is is a legal case. It is something that is is getting attention. How has that been for you? Yeah, most people actually support me. And a lot of the teammates tell me that they're happy I'm doing interviews and stuff because they don't want to speak out because they don't want to get hate or backlash or some of their friends believe differently, so they don't want to lose friendships. But a lot of people, I would say, are really happy that I'm doing it. 
And Travis, for you, I mean, when something like this happens, people have a choice and their choice can be they're going to be quiet about it. They're not going to talk about it. Right. They're they're going to sort of ride off into the sunset and make it go away or they're going to make a decision to stand up and say something about it. You've chosen the latter. Um, what made you choose that? Because we've chosen to ride off into the sunset on too many issues with the school before. So we we're tired of it and we're finally taking a stand. And what are you hoping, Travis, to see at the end of this? What do you want the end result of this uh, to be? Uh, the end result that I would like to have my coaching position back. Um, that's that's a very good question. I There's many things that I, I would like, but I don't think they're going to happen. Uh, it would be nice if the superintendent resigned. Um, it would be great if Vermont law would change. I don't think that's going to happen. So if, if we can't make that happen, then we need to have private stalls in the locker room, which the school claims that they're trying to do now. Uh, that that's what I would like to see. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not going to get back the friendships that we've lost through this or family member. I'm not going to make family members happy that have been upset with us over this. Um, that stuff I can't get back. But you felt compelled to, to stand up. You felt compelled to stand by what you thought was true. Yes, I we did feel that we need to. And I with the friendships that we've lost, uh, a lot of people that I've met over my life have reached out to me recently and, and appreciate what we're doing. Uh, we've received letters from people saying that they appreciate what we're doing, Facebook messages. I mean, we've also gotten a few that are uh, certainly not happy with what we're doing, but it, the majority has been positive support and to keep going forward. So that's with Phil's help. That's why we continue to move forward. And, and Phil, correct me if I'm wrong, part of this involved actually closing down the locker rooms at one point, right? I don't know if you could take us through that because that was part of the story that was was sort of out there and interesting as they were sort of investigating this. Is that accurate? Exactly right. After they announced charges or an investigation into Blake for her expressing her opinion on the locker room, they decided to shut down the locker room so that all the girls who use it weren't able to use it for the rest of the season. It was crazy. Billy, one other thing I should point out uh, is that the day we filed the lawsuit in federal court, the school lifted the suspension and revoked the discipline it imposed on Blake. So, yeah, it's, it sounds like it was one of those scenarios of this is bad PR for us, right? This is going to be bad PR and this is not going to go well. So we're going to now I, I can't I don't know if that's the case. It just it feels coincidental that on that day. Now, had you not filed, I assume this would have you, she would have had to serve this suspension. It sounds I, like I think it's exactly right. If, if Travis and Blake hadn't decided to stand up and we hadn't gotten involved, I think it's pretty clear Blake would be serving the suspension and participating in the restorative circle. So that just goes to show you it's important to stand up for your rights, especially the right of free speech, the right to express your views, and schools shouldn't be able to bully you uh, to shut down uh, dissent. Now, I don't know if we know this, but have any other students been through this restorative justice circle? Is this something that's been used before in the district? Yeah, we don't know that anyone has, but... That remains to be, we'll find out more as we go forward. As you go forward. Um, Phil, based on, I mean, you, you've you seen a lot of cases. You you know what you're doing here. Where do you think this ends, if you had to speculate? Yeah, I think this ends, I mean, the First Amendment's pretty clear, and it's very strong. So I think this ends with a ruling from the court that the school violated Blake and Travis's First Amendment rights, uh, and the policy that they're apparently pursuing uh, is unconstitutional. Well, I want to thank you all for coming on. You know, I, I appreciate you taking the time. I know these are not easy cases to talk about, um, you know, Travis and Blake. So I appreciate you doing that. And I know all of the, you, know, you get a lot of feedback, good and, and bad that comes along with this, but I appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks.